you show up early because you show up early. No, wrong show, right. Ryan. Wrong show. Oh. No, they dang. show up early to this one too, but is that not why we show up early? No, we're not early. This is the we're show. We're always late. We're, we're on precisely there, no when we mean to be. There's no pre-show banter on the pre-show banter show. This whole show is just pre-show banter. Oh, and that's a good point. Kind of fizzle that's in a, a little point. bit of news, right? We're There's not like. There's not going to be a webcast. There's not going to be we're a webcast. Here you're to, not too early. We're, we're just here to banter and wow. give hot. Wow, I'm live from Ukrainian prison. Here's John Strand. <laughs> <laughs> wow, Ukrainian prison looks like a Ukrainian sauna. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Are they? They're really sweating you out over there, huh? Yeah. <laughs> so Hal, this is where my my class is going to be for Waldo's hacking fest. This is nice. We, and then more. then we're switching to a barn dance and a hoedown. That's right. <laughs> switching. I thought that's the teach class. Us? Yeah. <laughs> Close enough. John will be teaching country line dancing and sock skills. There we go. Are you going to yell at anybody if somebody leaves the door open and say, what do you, what do you think we are in barn? <laughs> what do you think? I am. I am so <laughs> to do that. What the hell do you think we're... Oh, Sorry. Leave it open. We're good. Yeah. I noticed the horses are long gone. Yeah. Oh, you see who just that barn door open. Who's, who's this yeah. guy saying he's Jason? What is this? Wait, I don't think that's Jason. That's is not, it Jason? That's not the real Jason. It can't be. I think it probably is. if you're the real Jason, say something that only the real Jason would know. <laughs> oh no, not not on not on not on the air, not on the air. <laughs> aboard, aboard. <laughs> no, definitely on the air. Uh, the code word I told you. I want you to tell me the code word. <laughs> yes, tell us the code, the official BHIS safe word. Yeah, exactly. And then as soon as wait, we, nobody uh, told me the safe word. Well, as soon as the, it's told publicly, <laughs> we have to change it. So. Should we tell them the Sans instructor safe word? No, I mean yes. <laughs> Al. yeah, sure. They probably haven't changed it. Hell, he no, just said not. Gavin. That's, that's the thing, Jason. We never had a safe word. I know you're lying. Mm, the safe word is not Gavin. <laughs> Try again. Oh, the bear is sticky. With, okay, yeah, the bear is sticky with honey. Now, oh well, <laughs> wait, does Johnson, Jason watch? Hell. Adam Johnston is clearly someone from Sands from way back, like a student. Because do you think that's air you're breathing? Do you remember like the like, the fifteen? Yeah, like years that ago? that one. Like Scotus got so wrapped around the ankle on that, uh, um, okay. around the axle on that one. I, it, I'm it, like, I, this is pretty straightforward, Ed. I'm not sure why you're hung up on this, but yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, yeehaw! Well, here we go. No, oh. Ralph, how was your DefCon experience? It was good. It was busy. Uh, we did uh, five talks, so we did five iterations of our talk. So, nice. Same talk five times in just different places. Same talk five times. So for anyone who same hasn't place. gone, yeah, same <laughs> place. For anyone who hasn't gone to DefCon, it's uh, it's wild. There's over thirty thousand people there, so it's a very very big con. Um, and uh, we did. I did a talk with uh, Steve in the uh, Red Team Village. And it was packed, Like the line to get in was like two hours long, right? And what mm. they did is they gave out little tokens um, to come back at a certain time to see it. And so like, you know, we did it, but only a certain amount of people came back that hadn't seen it. So, yeah. And if you want, the slides are live. Yes. Yeah, we have the slides. And me and Steve are going to record the de demo or video of what we did since we got lots of practice and post it on YouTube. And so you can watch it and do it all you want. <laughs> and to all the people that came to the booth and said that they listened to the news and enjoy it, I just want to say, I don't know where John Strand is. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. We love you. Thank you so much con. for listening. Yeah, it, and watching. I've been to so many. Like, I've been to Vegas for so long. I shouldn't bitch because I'm in the presence of Hal, who's probably spent more time in Vegas than I have. Um, I don't know about that, John. <laughs> but uh, of course, but, I've um, spent more time in the Vegas ER than you have. So oh, <laughs> I forgot about that. <laughs> I forgot that's about strange that. Flex. Strange flex. Do wow. they have an ER, or do they just like put you in one of those oxygen pods on the strip? Yeah, that's, how, that's, that's level one ER. <laughs> They're just like, yeah, we we don't we don't really have an ER, but we have uh, Planet Hollywood. Or, yeah. <laughs> All right, let's roll the finger. Let's get this thing going. Beautiful. All right. Dun, 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 dun.
Hello and welcome to another edition of Black Hills Information Securities talking about news. Today we're going to be talking about millions of records that have been breached because it's uh, Monday. It's Monday, so we have lots of breaches. We're also going to be talking about anti-fascist check and greenpill.com and layoffs because we talk about all the things that people talk about in computer security. Apparently, companies are making money. Apparently, those security companies are doing quite well, and because of it, they need to lay off people. We're also going to be talking about Merlin Post-Exploitation Toolkit. We're going to be talking about teens hacking the Boston subway, but somehow still can't escape Boston. And to discuss all of this, I am joined by my illustrious cast, who is still recovering. Quite a few of us are recovering from last week. A bunch of people went to DEF CON. I stayed at the Sturgis rally, and I decided I'd go back to my roots and go back to grilling burgers for an entire week at the Sturgis rally for bikers, which reminded me why I got into computer security in the first place. So I'm joined by Ryan. Oh, we got to kill a fly. Got it. Oh, got it. First Damn, time got it. Boom. Joined by a fly. Right. Ryan, who makes us look good, smell good, feel good, all good all the smell time. Good. Wow. Smell good. Wow. good all yeah, the Ryan, time. Yeah, Ryan, can I get some more deodorant, please? Yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll, ship, I'll ship it to you right now. Good, man. Man. Ship me that Florida like grade. He's going to eat it a lot. Give me that Florida yeah, grade is, stuff. <laughs> Gator like musk. Television. And I, we're also joined by Hal. Um, Hal has been someone that's been making me feel stupid for 17 years straight it's been a really long time <laughs> people will make me uh, everyone does but Wade i think of well hal as the official voice of <laughs> linux he, he's uh, like he, yeah. when i think like if linux had like an official narrator it would just be his voice i love that That's not i bad. totally agree <laughs> i guess what if we, we could Wade's do like mustache? an audio linux? Uh, Wait, yeah, I'm not gonna have, now you now you forced me to like go into this cage match with stallman and, and linus and and like you know they, they like don't the want to be public, though. They they yeah. don't want their voices being recorded. That that's what if like there this... was like audio Linux for like that you that just played as you did it. You don't see anything. It's just audio Linux. It's how just reading it. Like <laughs> yes, Star Trek. it's it's that's like a I prompt. Imagined. You yeah, find yeah, yourself yeah. in a room. There is yeah. a terminal. What do you type? Oh. And then you have to like <laughs> oh, okay. CD. Okay, okay. You've, gotta make you've been eaten by a group. Do you know? a video <laughs> where it's just a pound prompt, and then Hal's voice comes out and says pound prompt. You say LS, and then Hal reads you the directory contents. But he does we it like do he's it. very frustrated with the sigh. It's like, oh, God. Don't right, worry. So with AI, that's... it's easy. We just record yeah. like two seconds of this webcast, and then we yeah, can make it happen. Make it happen. <laughs> that, that audio that you played of me was spot on. That was really, really good. Um, they had this audio before their talk about how they're the best hackers I've ever met and how they deserve raises and all those things. And I had to seriously think. Did I say this? This sounds like something I would say. Yeah, deep fakes are real. Deep fakes. All right, are real. let's get let's get rolling. I want to jump straight into um, Hal. Since you're on, do you want to talk about the uh, Antifa.se site? AFA yeah. research members register from the Nordic Resistance Movement's workshop. It's been green pilled. What do we have here? Yeah. So you know, I mean, data breaches aren't always bad things. I guess um, we we've got. Um, the anti-fascist group out of Sweden who uh, took advantage of some rather lax security on one of their uh, local uh, uh, neo-Nazi uh, groups and have been all up in their web business for apparently several years um, and have just recently made available the worldwide customer list of different uh, neo-Nazi and white supremacist groups who've been coming to this uh Swedish group for literature and, and basically they've been tracking all the orders for white supremacist literature and, and who's been paying and what they've been paying and the addresses where the literature has been going to. The and, person uh, writing a book on fascism is like, this is really awkward, but I will. <laughs> uh, 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 <laughs> no, no, no. I was writing a book. See, I was writing a book. Yeah. So um, anyway, so uh, apparently the, the anti-fascist group, contacted all of the the customers and said we're about to to publish this information and apparently gave them some way of opting out I, i'm not really clear on on what that was um but in any event uh there's a big tranche of information that's been uh been so you're out. saying that swedish hackers are nice enough to have an opt-out <laughs> yeah. yeah you know i don't even get an opt-out from disney <laughs> i know so. it's like i know it's like a haven of you know 
liberal politics or whatever. Apparently, they still have fascists, but also they have opt-out hackers. Yeah, I, that, that seems they, very. They strange. doxed the uh, the admins of the website, and uh, you know. Anyway, there's a there's a bunch of information out there, and if you're well, in the mood Griffin, to go, punch it's some part Nazis, of GDPR. Yeah. That's hilarious. Griffin like, info yeah. said it's part of GDPR. Yeah, we're GDPR yeah. compliant hackers. Yeah, <laughs> we really. This we would be scary that. if someone accidentally signed you up for this, and then you see your name. That was my first thought. Yeah. I was like, oh, <laughs> scroll down to the U.S. <laughs> 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 yeah. Everybody checking their address now in the, in the yeah, database. Okay. Oh. The the amount of people is shockingly small. It's more less of a data breach, more of a blog post. But yeah, 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 that's, that's a good point. Yeah, yeah, but you yeah. know, whatever. Yeah, it even I, tells I mean, you what they mean. I mean, would would it, would it make you feel better if there were millions of people all over the world <laughs> subscribing to this nonsense? I mean, it, it no, would I'm make kind it of, seem I'm kind more of glad realized, it's a small amount of information. God, hell, if that was the case, it'd be Facebook. I don't. They know. did <laughs> nail. <yeah. laughs> They did nail the uh, like having their worst possible picture. Like that's a classic news thing of like let's pick the most unflattering image of these people. Oh, they're yeah. flattering images of these people. I mean, like, yeah, like you know. So I mean, like, who's the most unflattering? Estonia is pretty bad. Finland. Yeah. Finland looks like the, uh, he looks like a techno Viking. Oh, that's exactly what I was gonna say. Yeah. I mean, I'm surprised <laughs> that the guy, the guy, like one of them, just looks like he's 15. Well, but that dude, you're talking about the one with the goatee. I was he went about to Chicago Jenny once. Head. There's there's one of the guys, he's holding up a banner. I'm pretty sure it says white power because they're not very creative. But I was thinking about shaving my head and just having a beard. And that picture made me realize it's probably a bad idea. This, so this sure. reminds me of the subreddit. It's like behold the master race or whatever. And it's like racist people, but they're like really just not living well. They, yeah, they, they, you know, like th that's where we're at here with this. It's like, yeah, I, I mean, there's a lot of self hatred here, cl clearly. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they're clearly. not doing great in life. If you're taking a selfie uh, on your couch with a Chicago shirt and tucking your tie into your top button, you know, hey, you got to tuck those ties in to keep it from, you know, getting in your schnitzel, I guess. <laughs> getting in the like the uh, book shredder that you have there at your fascist rally. Your book shredder. <laughs> oh, no, it's in the book shredder. Oh! We, are, we are very efficient here. We don't burn <laughs> books anymore. It's a cross we have a cross-cut shredder. Yeah. It's GDPR <laughs> compliant. It's GDPR and it's better for the environment, okay? <laughs> you got cross-dressing <laughs> shredder? What? <laughs> we might be fascist, but we have to but still save the, the environment. All the books are eco-friendly as yeah, well. We just went Website where you had to ship things, where they like submit profile pic. Uh, if, <laughs> just find these people. Oh my god! Uh, anyway, I bought a T-shirt. Let's I, talk I, about I don't layoffs. think these people were, were doing really great with the opsec, John. You know, so. probably not. <laughs> not. Speaking of great, hey, speaking of opsec, uh, let's talk about SecureWorks and Rapid Seven. Oh yeah, let's talk about. So this is something that kind of entered my radar at DefCon because I got a lot of people coming up to the booth saying. Here's my resume. Are you hiring? Are you know a lot of people looking for jobs more more so than I feel like I've seen at l previous conventions. Mm -hmm. um, there was yeah, there's some Rapid Seven stuff. There's SecureWorks. There's I think Hacker One. There's a lot of other tech companies as well. So, you know, SecureWorks, 15% of staff. They never tell you what the staff is. Is it all just the, you know, recruiters? Is it, is it the pen it's testers? Is it the IT people? I don't know. No, Corey, but, Corey, just for you, man, it's the mid-level managers. <laughs> is it? No, is it's it just actually? enough people to frighten you to get back in the office, you you uh, rapscallions, yeah. right? Yeah, that's oh, right. Mm. Yeah, people from work for, who work from home are lazy. They're doing drugs. They're having right. sex. They're not working. I'm like, God, I did all of that. Hour. And they're tanking our know. commercial <laughs> real estate investments. So get back yeah. in the office. Yeah, let's not forget the $400 billion that, you know, New York is missing out on because of, you know, leases and agreements. That has nothing to do with it, Hal. Nothing yeah. at all. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, I so uh, the one person I talked to that was laid off, and I won't say what company they worked for, but they said they had eight weeks. That's pretty tight. I mean, that's like, uh, that's a pretty short window to find something. Eight so, but, but I want to go back to what was the reasoning behind this? Because I thought that um, Rapid Seven actually did better than expected, right? Um, yes. Or are they? Is it they did better than expected? But over the years, they've still lost so much VC money. I mean, they're they're. Revenue. I think that's where I yeah I yeah, I don't know, but that's my guess is that it's based there. on like the interest rates and also like Ralph and I were talking about this. Like I feel like it's just general from the financial side uncertainty about the future. And people aren't like, but yeah, I mean, it's all comes down to, yeah, 20% growth. Like more people are buying security products as a whole. 
So maybe it's just uh, hey, but, you know, we want to tighten up the numbers so, so we can sell you. Their numbers, their numbers are good. They posted 140 million. They're 14 percent revenue year over year. Um, but I guess in the first three There's months, still a loss of 67. Yeah, yeah, that was the loss. So they started feeling it and uh, ending in June 30th. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, but they're but it's still they're still beating uh, Wall Street expectations, right? Of their revenue. But so, but but here's well, a I, question I, I have about this too. With all of these different firms, is this a byproduct? And seriously, we have a bunch of people listening. How much of this is a byproduct of like VC money tightening and the entire because. The whole VC thing is, is a complete Ponzi scheme, right? Like the idea is you go through, you get your series A and that person comes in very, very quickly. Let's say they give you $5 million and then series B comes in with a different group of suckers and that series A suckers, they actually get bought out or whatever, or eventually you go IPO and it becomes stock market suckers. Um, how much of this do you think is actually like the entire IT sector is viewed as toxic? So the game of like, you know, the Ponzi scheme is stopping. And, you know, whether or not it's stocks, whether or not it's additional series A, B, C, D or whatever it is, venture capital, Fat Man Will, that's what VC stands for. Is that do you think that that has something to do with this, that these companies like this money, all of this stuff is slowing down and if that's getting impact? It feels like this has been going on since. uh, I think 100 percent. And I think it's a lot of it's driven by stock market. I think the hedge funders, hedge fund traders right now are pulling back on tech in a huge way. And I think that financial impact is making all the heads of these companies that are publicly offered or publicly trading going oh shit we got to do something to make sure these quarterly numbers stay high i, th- I think yeah yeah and I also just- i mean watch the interest rates right i mean so like you yes. know, our, our yeah. fed is yeah. jacking interest rates through the roof which is giving like these v- vc companies uh, and all their investors better places to park their money than these you know kind of high-tech startups and so like in 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 the salad days when like interest rates were low and it's, money was essentially free, the push for the VCs was like grow 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 right just like just keep growing right and like and your growth curve was a uh, was the measure of of how good your company was doing right. But now as as you say like the VC money wants to go somewhere else where they can maybe get a better return on their investment and and now they're looking at the actual numbers a little bit more closely. Right. And then you're like, I, yeah, I don't think it's necessarily like the Ponzi scheme is collapsing. I think it's just more of a stability phase. And I feel that way with a lot of things across the industry, like a lot you know, social media, I feel, is entering kind of a stability phase where like it's really fractured now. And you've got, you know, Twitter's gone, I guess. Not really. But like people are moving on to Mastodon or they're moving on to threads or they're moving on to Blue Sky or whatever, like. It's not like the growth, massive growth phase. It's more of like a stability splintering phase. And I feel like that's where the stock market's at too. It's not but, tanking. No, it's not you, collapsing, but it's also not like another boom. Do you feel it's like this is like stable. a combination though? Like it's been happening for a while now, right? Like, yeah. I remember John calling this almost like a year ago when I, I want to say that, but it probably was much shorter that one one big company started layoffs and then he's just like it's going to keep rolling and rolling and rolling and well, i wonder if this is the ball slowing down at least a little so bit you forgot right? to mention one critical critical thing and that is uh the pandemic times money was pouring into tech like crazy because yes that's a yes, big factor yeah. yeah tech could not hire fast enough to keep keep everything afloat because everybody went virtual right yes that's that circus has stopped everybody's stepping off and going back to their real world and there's there's a glut of of dollars and 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 people in the industry now and so it's correcting back to normal it's normalizing i think yeah and also kind of i I also want everybody kind of like that's listening to kind of take a step back and realize that a lot of these firms are not profitable uh, as as far as cash flow positive they just aren't um we had a bunch of investors that came out um they were talking about partnering with us uh, on some things, not buying BHIS. So the BHIS people start freaking out. Um, but they were investors and they came out. They were from Japan and they came out and they had spent a week on the East Coast, a week on the West Coast. Then they flew to um, hang out with us for a few days here in South Dakota, which was a really interesting way to close it out. <laughs> but the head guy in the group, one of the things that freaked me out is he said the only companies that are cash flow positive right now are very large corporations. Like you're looking at like, you know, the like your standard, um, like, you know, Rapid7, I think should have been in that group because they're very, very large. Um, and then service-based companies. So a lot of the companies like Black Hills Information Security or Trusted Sec or companies like that, 
they're doing fine, right? But they aren't selling a product, right? And they don't have huge research and development and marketing expenditures that they're putting into this and huge sales teams that they're putting into this. And he said that a lot of the firms that they ran into, I think he said something like 98% of the firms that they talked about, they investigated, they researched, they did their portfolios on, were not cash flow positive. And, you know, we kind of talked about the VC thing. We talked about the tech slowdown. We talked about the pandemic ramp up and everything starting to slow back down. I think all of that is kind of coalescing and we're seeing that. And I do think that there's a little bit like Wade brought up, you know, one company does it and the board of directors are like, what about us? Should we be laying 15% of our workforce? And I, I guess what I'm getting at is I believe that it's a fantastic time to be in computer security. I think it's an absolutely horrible time to be in computer security working for a company that has a tremendous amount of debt in the form of funding in series A, B, C, or D, or whatever letter you want to go with, because those companies are never going to get cash flow positive and it's going to get really, really, really ugly. And it already is for a number of firms that do have that VC funding in play because that exit strategy that you constantly hear, like, what's your exit? And mine is like, F you, I'm not planning on exiting. Why would I do that? But for a ton of these companies, whenever you're talking about an exit strategy, it used to be VC funding, get more series and rounds of buyouts, and then eventually get bought out by a large company like Amazon. Or the other exit was to go IPO. And with Silicon Valley Bank and the VC space clo like closing down, that becomes not a viable exit anymore. And then going to the stock market and becoming IPO, I mean, you know, it's bad when Jim Cramer is saying, you know, this whole entire industry is toxic in the IT security industry. That's a bad sign. Not that Jim oh, Cramer is Jim right. Kramer. I mean, <laughs> best bet on the opposite of whatever Jim Cramer says. <laughs> maybe, maybe, it's, maybe it's a great time. Yeah. But and I go back to, I think it's a fantastic time because there's a bunch of companies, like I mentioned, Trusted. Um, I would also put, you know, Canary would be one of those companies that's never taken VC funding. Like if you're in a company that's trying to be very, very principled about your growth, things are going really, really well. If you're not, it's going to get really ugly. And I think that job security is going to be a problem across but the board. The VC push was always like, find a multiplier, right? Like, so like yep. Black Hills is great, right? Like you're, you're a, a professional services business and, and as big as you are, you're still a boutique professional services business. And that's great. You can just make money forever. But from a investment perspective, there's no multiplier there, right? No, and no, that's what no, happened no. to Mandiant, right? Like the, the VC money came in and they said, you guys have got to have a multiplier. So you guys have got to get a turn from a professional services based company to a product based company. You know, and we got Mirror and, and we all know how well that went. And, um, you know, but I mean, eventually they, the, their exit was they got bought out by FireEye. And again, we know how well that went. Um, but I mean that, you know, that would, they, and then Google, they, they teed that up but, and, you know, good for Kevin Mandia and, and, but uh, even with that multiplier, how those products, they, they, you know, finding out over the years doing this and looking at it, a lot of those companies, like what was the other one, uh, protect wise, do you guys remember protect wise? They were basically full packet capture in the cloud. And it was something that was kind of impossible at very large data speeds because of sharding and things like that. But it was a product, it had that multiplier, right? It was a product, yeah. it had the multiplier, tons of investment, but it wasn't viable right. and it wasn't cash flow positive. So it, it's very, it has very little to do that I found out over the years with whether or not your product is making money or not. It's whether or not you can take that product, somebody invests in your company, and then they can sell somebody else on your product yeah. to dump like yeah. twice the amount of sure. money in and get out fast. I, I right, feel it like used to be Mandian, you could get bought out by Cisco for you know a quarter of a billion dollars and- I, yeah, I feel like with Mandiant, if your if your end result is to get bought up by Google for five point four bill, I think you're doing all right. So whatever they did probably worked. But yeah, but um, that's an exit, right? They got yeah. bought by yeah. that. You know, whether or not Google got that return on investment, I honestly don't even know if Google cares. So like, I think what I, John's saying is that when we see the layoffs, that doesn't necessarily mean that the demand or that people don't want that ex thing, right? Like exactly. it's just. It, you know, I think that's kind of what he said. Because well, the other thing, too, I wanted to say about the Rapid7 one is they actually beat their um, uh, expectations. And so the stock rose and then they additionally announced the layoffs and it rose even more. Right. So who was really, yeah. you know, this was like. It, it, I mean, the it, other it, thing you never know, like Ralph and I were yeah. talking about this at DEF CON is like it could just be a division. 
Like it could just be like, all right, we're laying off. We're, we're, we're drawing back from Alexa. This is a thing that happened at Amazon. They had like mm-hmm. a division that's like 3,000 people work at Alexa or whatever. It's like a huge com- part of the company. And someone has decided we're going to either spin this off or we're rolling it back. There's this division that just goes away. So that's like 15% of Rapid 7's workforce could be one division that they just decided isn't profitable or is it like it might not be a corporate thing. Also, to wrap up this discussion, I have a quote from this, uh, the CEO of Costco. Uh, if you effing touch the price of the hot dog, I will kill you. <laughs> <laughs> so that's basically yep. where we're at with cybersecurity. Well, and and, well, and we okay. have that all the time. I have people that come in and, you know, they're like, you know what you should do? You should start charging for webcasts. You should totally. <laughs> it's like, you, you do that, I'll kill you. you, know, so. <laughs> if, you if you take away, pay what you can, I will effing kill you. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I mean, it's, you know, again, as somebody's pointing out in the chat, though, there are real people whose, whose lives are being impacted by this. Absolutely. Prank, yeah, dog of Sinai. And, and uh, yeah. for, for these people, um, you know, I know that Black Hills has a lot of resources. Uh, yes. And so let, that's a great, that's a, yeah, let's, let's segue. So let's, what I, people came into the up. booth and they said, are you hiring? And I said, I don't know. But I said, if you come into our Discord, it's 60,000 strong or whatever. It's huge. And there is a job postings channel. And I spoke to multiple people at the con that had hired people from the Black Hills job board and had great results. So if you also, are, also Jason will help you find a job once he comes back, maybe. Yeah. Well, job hunting like a hacker YouTube video, right? Yeah. So look for look for job hunting videos. We've done a number of them uh, by Banjo Crashland, and it isn't just an issue of. And this is this this sucks. There's a lot of times where people are doing amazing things that are the kindness of their heart, and it's great, but it doesn't help. Like here, look at my resume. And I think it's wonderful that people look at people's resumes. But what, what Banjo Crashland or Jason walks through in his video is don't create a resume. Create a resume specifically for the job that you're going after at the company you want to go to. And he shows you how you can use their job posting and you can build your resume to tie that up and basically make it so it's a direct one-to-one correlation. And everything that he talks about in those videos, it is also applicable if you want to start your own company to actually writing proposals for work. It ties up the same. So yes, I know that we joke about this. I know that it's gallows humor, but for some of us, we've been doing this now for a long, long, long time. We've been through multiple of these cycles. We've seen the same mistakes being made. And yes, we do understand there is a human element associated with it. And yes, we have lots of resources to help people out. Yes, and if you're wondering what the perception is of these layoffs, the layoffs are not perceived by the industry as these are tainted goods. They're, no one's going to hire these people. This is like opportunities for a lot of other companies like Black Hills that don't typically have oh. opportunities to acquire people from Facebook or Amazon or, or whatever. That This is an opportunity for smaller companies, which, by the way, they're better to work for. Yeah. Um, so, you know, just something to consider. It's not like the rest of the industry is like, well, we're dialing it back. We're like, let's see how we can absorb these people. How, how can well, we go get this talent, you know? And, and we kind of briefly had that conversation. We were talking about the continuous pen testing and how we want to continue to grow continuous pen testing because we do want to continue to hire really great people. Um, it's just, once again, we don't take monstrous amounts of VC funding and then ramp up. We don't, grow. yeah, we don't do huge layoffs because we don't hire 50 people at once. So yeah. we don't like it's, <laughs> it's a double sword. entire when, companies, when, right? Yeah. You Microsoft do. famously in 2021 hired 20,000 people. That's like, you know, 20% of their workforce. And then obviously they had to let some of those people go because I mean, you know, whoever made that decision was maybe doing some weird I, math, but I don't know. It's just, I, do I remember, I remember joining Google back in, in the early 2000s and um, Ooh, it, was in the, it was in the auditorium flex. with, uh, you know, 200, 300 people. And the HR flack comes out to, to start the day. And it's like, oh, small group this week, you know, and I'm. Just, <laughs> <laughs> <right>? <laughs> yeah, it's half the workforce, small hiring amount. I do want to address something that was mentioned um, just in passing, but I want to focus on it. Um, There's a belief, unfortunately, whenever somebody gets laid off from a corporation, they get a stench on them and people are like, well, they must suck. If the other company let that person go, they must not be a very good employee. And that's that's definitely not the case Uh, with a lot of these layoffs we have seen. And I'd like some of your like some of the panel to kind of talk about this, too. Over the years, I have seen companies let people go that I'm just like, some of them work for BHIS now. I'm like, why did they let this person go? They're amazing. Yes. And there's very often there's little rhyme. There's very little reason to it. 
they got some kind of stupid metric that, you know, maybe some Harvard MBAs came up with that they throw at this stuff. Like billable hours is one of the ones I think is, is just hilarious. They're like, well, these people are most billable. Let's keep them and let's let all of these non-billable people go away. You just let your research staff go. And it, it, it's stupid, but please don't hold this against people in the industry because yeah. there's absolutely no correlation between how good of an employee they are and whether or not they got laid off. No, exactly. I mean, you look at these big yeah. company layoffs and the, you know, the, the order comes down from on high, 10% of every department has to go, right? I'm just like, there's no discrimination, you know, and it's like, of course, good people get, get knocked out, um, you know, or so the people you do, who, uh, you, you cat start employees.txt, you sort randomly, and then you <laughs> yeah. tail dash N10. You're like, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, to be honest know. with you, I would feel better about that if I got laid off. And they said, this is exactly what we did. It just was, It's random. Know, we took health was, class. We, we, we learned totally Linux. We took class. We, we learned, learned Linux command line. Scripting. And <laughs> at least you, you can have a little bit of respect for the process that way. Yeah. Um, yeah. You looked at your name, rolled a dice. You got a one. I'm sorry. Like, <laughs> so, so hey, Hal, if I wanted to, if if I wanted to write a bash script for that, where would I go? Do you have any materials that can help? Do you have any classes or webcasts coming up, Hal? Funny you Not should ask. Bad. No, um, you should come to uh, Wild West Hacking Fest. I'm going to be teaching uh, command line in the pre-conference training. And before that, I've got uh, Linux forensics coming up in September. So, and wow. for the business people, it can be used for business. Yeah, yes, it can be. I, I also want to point I've out. I've been giving it to business personal, for years now. I mean, yeah, just as a personal like t testimonial. Um, anytime I can get the recordings of Hal teaching, I go back and I listen to them because he covers a lot of really really cool stuff. But my favorite thing that Hal does is off roading. Um, it, it's basically someone asks a question and he'll answer it, but he'll answer it with a command prompt and just like, just kind of knocking it's stuff like, out. Here, let's just try this out. I don't know. You know, let's, let's just give it a go. It's kind of like, and I know Hal can do this too. I've seen Hal do this, but it's kind of like when Joff did his regular expressions webcast where people were just having him change his regular expression on the fly and he was just changing it. It's like black <laughs> magic. And you have to take an opportunity. Hey, to folks, you know, like this is your comfort zone, but this is where the learning is over here, right? So <laughs> it's over like, here. Head, head in this direction. Look, look this way. <laughs> yeah. In this yeah. hard stuff over here. Well, so, so. someone in the chat like called attention to like you know if if you're trying to hold people accountable and implement transparency, that's how you end up on the layoff list. Like truthfully, there there are many cases where whatever you're doing that got you laid off might be a good thing at a lot of other companies like yeah, <laughs> like there, there are yeah so if you did get well, you know but it could also I wanna, and i want to give an example i had a friend um that worked at a company um and they uh, they were on like their threat hunting team and every time that they closed out a ticket it was like beautiful like great technical detail full step-by-step -step explanations the thought process the methodology was solid the documentation was solid and they were so good that the other analysts would go through and would like look up their tickets whenever they were doing an analysis and they would, they would use that as kind of their learning tool. Now this naturally meant that this analyst didn't close as many tickets as other analysts in this organization. But once again, their tickets were the gold standard. So this company put this person on a, per, a performance improvement plan because literally the only metric that they gave a shit about was how many tickets did you close and how long did it take you to close them? And the vast majority of the people that were getting good marks were just like typing in FP, closing the ticket, saying false positive and then moving on. And this so, is why blue team statistics are absolutely yeah. horrid, right? Like it's not yeah. hard to fake blue team statistics. You have to actually look at quality, read stuff and understand what's going on. That's uh, it's like it's been a struggle myself. my entire career. <laughs> to this day, I don't understand why companies get that wrong all the time. I mean, there's no, there's no qualitative measure. It's always been, um, because the people doing not, the grading don't right. have the the ability to discriminate, right? Like the, the, they don't know. I mean, so it's yeah. easier that's to non-quality things. Yeah. That's why it's yeah. easier to read te the text. It's where crazy. All the people there was a, there was another comment made in the chat that I think we should. Um, uh, point out it was a little while ago but but relationships matter and that uh, was the nature of the club that was uh was that fat man will or white cyber duck that did that? I, 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 I think it was white cyber um but i i think that's really 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 important and i i would tell you that's how i got to know john strand um that's how i got to know 
uh, some friends. Worst mistake of your life. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But, uh, you know, getting out there and and, um, attending some conferences, uh, it was the times of DerbyCon back then, but um, really, uh, really made a big difference. And so relationships, I think, are a huge part of the industry. But let's let's also talk a little bit about some of your shitty jobs. Like, you know, you were at that one place between the university and us. Uh They kind of had those types of statistics that they were running. Um, and that program, that company didn't do well, like they, their security, it didn't work because they were measuring the wrong thing. But there, yeah. I mean, it's like the stock market as a whole, it's all based on human emotion and it's tough for leadership or executives or investors or whatever to say like, Hey, we can't put KPIs on everything. We can't necessarily measure every employee's effectiveness. Like they're like, no, that's not true. We can KPI emails per day, plus tickets per hour, plus right clicks per d- month we figured it out we used ai sap we pay a million dollars for this please help yeah right. as, well, as, as Corey I, swings think, his next golf swing well, yeah. I, think that, I think that after a while you lose sight of things right so hal hal and i have been evaluated more than almost any human beings on the planet <laughs> like, <laughs> this is true and, and 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 years ago i'm going back to whenever we were on the 10 scale at sands it really, really, really felt like, you know, it, like it was an indication of where there's smoke and there's fire. And we had Stephen Northcutt, who was an instructor. And if like a scores dropped or something like that, I remember getting calls from Stephen and he would be like, hey, what's going on? I'm like, man, I don't know. I'm trying this. I'm trying this. I'm trying this. And he would give some advice and then he'd be like, hang in there. Right. And it was more of an issue of like it was to kind of like a barometer of something to check on but it wasn't the sole scoring objective that was your entire life, right? And it, after a while, it kind of turned into that. And then you started getting people that started gaming the system. You know, they'd be like, oh, you know, yeah. if, you don't, Big time. if you don't score me a perfect five or a perfect 10 that tells the group that I should be fired, so please score me tens. And, <laughs> and then the management kind of, we lost Stephen Northcutt, the management kind of became this thing where like they started doing a stacked ranking where they're like, well, John's clearly a better instructor than this person over here who's teaching a completely different class. It's like comparing <laughs> apples to oranges, right? And that metrics completely messed up that entire system to the point where it almost becomes worthless after a while. So, you know, metrics are important, right? You know, how many tickets do you close is absolutely something that should be tracked by management. How many emails you send, all of that, time on tickets, that should be tracked, but that shouldn't be the only metric that you're actually Mm -hmm. looking into. Um, I don't know how if you have anything else to add about that. Well, I mean, you know, how, how, I I gotta say, you know, if it was me or Hal, we'd probably write a cron job that was sitting there closing tickets for us in the background. <laughs> Just to make yeah. sure stuff was getting done. Um, you know, I mean, I mean the, the, you know, the wisest thing that anybody ever said to me is, you know, if you if if you measure things irrationally, what you get is irrational behavior, right? So, mm-hmm. like, if 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 your metric is is tickets per day or whatever, I mean, people are naturally going to optimize. For whatever you measure so so choose your metrics carefully and i don't know you know the other the other thing i believe in is if you treat people like like toddlers or you treat people like criminals you're gonna get that kind of behavior at the end of the day right i mean so um, okay so on that hell i got a question for you though talking about treating people like toddlers or criminals and open this up for everybody whenever you know somebody young intern getting ready to go from college into the wide world. If you're going into these companies, right? If you're going to like a rapid seven or secure works. And by the way, I mean, I knew we knew the people that kind of started lurk and secure works. We knew the people that were there at the beginning of rapid seven. A lot of them aren't there or tenable or whatever these different companies are, you know, that whenever it comes to getting the best talent in the industry, people that are looking to work at your company, understand that they are nothing more than a cog. They are nothing more than a line in a spreadsheet. The company does not give a shit about them. And that's going to impact recruitment. It has to, right? Well, it's also so, going to impact whether I decide to have three of those jobs at once and just tow the line and be over the floor. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, and, and I think that's you know what a lot of people have been saying in the chat and, and here in, in, the, in the channel. The best jobs you're getting are not those jobs, right? The best jobs that you're going to get are the ones where you make personal relationships and you find the companies that don't behave that way towards their employees. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, 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 
in, in every company at the corporate level, at the high level, the CEOs love to be like, we're one big happy family. I, I can guarantee. Oh, yeah. You. The, 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 minute I hear, the minute I hear the whole family motif, the F I am word? Like we, running for the fucking door. I'm we like, actually really? changed that because people at BHIS started saying that all the time. They're like, oh, it's like a family company. It's a family. And we're like, no, Eric and I had it renamed. I think CJ came up with the idea of a tribe. Yes. If you're not supporting and you're not helpful for the tribe, the tribe is going to leave your ass. Um, family, so, yes. Family is the word that you use when you want to abuse your employees. Family right. yes. is like, <laughs> it's like and guess what? You can't leave and we have to wake you up every night with socked. You know what I mean? Like, it's yeah. like you, you have no choice. We're just going to, we're a family. Like you have, yeah. you're, you're so here family is keyword for, for unpaid labor. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yes, exactly. That is exactly right. So, yeah. That man will, and we all know BHIS is totally not a cult. They're they're not, not. We're not a cult. It's not a cult. No, not we're, a cult. we're better than that. All right. Hey, if so if let, BHS was a cult. cult, John would be having a lot more sex than he is right now. Yeah. <laughs> At this moment, oh, right? That's a, jo uh, that's a joke you. that only you can make. So thank you for coming <laughs> yeah. to the show. Oh, Joff could have gotten away with that Speaking one. Of <laughs> you have to, that's a number of people. That's like have, an OG joke. Anyway, what about uh, families of products to Dell? What, you guys see that Dell home? Yeah. Take us, there. Is this take us there, Florida got? man. I, let me take you this one. Yeah, so Dell Compellent has hard-coded keys exposed. All right, so... Oh, yeah, is, this is this is classic. Yeah, so Dell offers a storage product, okay? Um, and so this is... Uh, you can integrate this with vCenter, all right? So you, with your virtual, um, virtual environment. And what it'll do is it'll provision storage for you for virtual machines, okay? Well, what they found is that they were using a hard-coded AES key inside of the configuration manager for this product. And the um, privileges that are required for this um, storage product to work is a vCenter administrator. So what happens is, is that once you gain access to this, you can then uh, become a vCenter administrator and then you're, I mean, the, the moon, right? So, uh, what's yeah. The, what's the score on this one? <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm trying to open it up right now. It's, it's it, it does require some level of access, so this isn't like totally remote. It's, this is an internal pen test type of deal, yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. This so is like, uh, next coming soon to a Nessa scan yeah. near you, yeah, CDE exactly. ID not found, not That's found, yeah, <laughs> static <laughs> AS key, in it's 7.8. I, wow, make this joke a... every, I make this joke every time, but if you pay them enough, you never get a 10. So it's got to yeah, be probably a 9.9. <laughs> I, but how does, I wonder how old No, I mean, it's, but it's not, is. I mean, it's not remote code execution, right? No, it's not and it's like code, nothing no. that no one's going to expose these things except for like five people on Shodan. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> five or 500. Uh, yeah. 500 is probably more accurate. Within number. five orders of magnitude of five. It's fine. Every IP in my network needs to be public. You know that's true. Yeah. Speaking of public data, millions of Americans' health data was stolen after MoveIt hackers targeted IBM. This is kind of a follow-up from the story last week where Colorado Department of Healthcare Policy and Financing, which is responsible for administrating Colorado's healthcare, or sorry, Medicaid program, that had fallen victim to this mass attack. So it looks like they went after IBM um, they used application. Move it. The application was used by IBM, which was used by Colorado. Um, so yeah, oh. this has got to be post X because, like, yeah. I have been I've been tracking the clop stuff for a while, and I've been recently they posted now it's all torrent based distribution of the files, and I've been downloading them, and there is, I mean, it's like four or five terabytes compressed right now. Like, it, wow. there's enough data in there. There's going to be some post X. There's going to be some fallout. So I guess like. If you were affected by this, please get in touch or make sure you know what was exposed so that you can validate all the creds and data and things that can, or at least as much as you can, so that it can't be used for these kinds of attacks. Because it's just going to keep, it's going to be the, you know, forever days on some of this stuff. So, but, but this one I wanted to ask though, it looks like they went after IBM and they got Colorado, they got Missouri, they got Oregon. Um, so we, you know, the, the old joke of, no one ever got fired for hiring IBM. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Those days no are one, long gone. No one Those days are long gone. But, but in the networking space, it was Cisco for a while. Yeah. Cisco, yeah. 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 And, and, and with this, um, the, okay, so the one that's kind of bothering me is IBM is a fairly large company. I don't know. You may or may not have heard of it. This is a company that has a security team. I've met them. They're a decent security team. Like, 
they're one of the teams that as soon as the move it stuff started like festering, don't don't you think that they should have picked up on this and taken care of this faster? Or am I being too Cobbler's naive? children have no shoes though, right? They're not looking internally. They're looking Oh, that's true. They're looking that's at their true. their paying customers. They're not looking at the other ninety percent of the corporation that's doing skunk works IT with this movement yeah. crap, right? So that uh, doesn't surprise me at all, frankly. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. also it might be later on too. Like they, they might be disclosing this now, but it was like right around the same time. Like they may have not known about the vulnerability because it was being actively exploited before it was disclosed. Yeah. Mm. I mean, this is yeah. just you know, this is just classic for for a breach like this, right? This kind of rolling, expanding yes. cloud of of crap that just keeps showering down. Yeah, I mean, it's gonna have a long is, tail. Yeah. yeah, there's a word for this. I can't think of it. Something storm. <laughs> Something hmm. debt. Debt. I, 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 I was thinking clusterfuck, really, but <laughs> oh, that's it, Joff. This, that's it. Joff. This is a family company and a family oh, show. Family show. <laughs> All about it's a family, family show. You got to keep it like in the this, family. I mean, it's been like this for like the twenty-four years I've been in this industry, right? Yep. It, I mean, even way, 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 way back, and not as back as far as Hal. But I'd like to get Hal's take on this too, because he's been doing it longer than I have. Like even coming in in 99, 2000 timeframe, people are like, yeah, we got a bunch of legacy systems and people aren't going to touch those or try to secure those. I mean, this has been the same story for that long. And if you're a CISO or a CIO or a CTO or whatever, wouldn't this be like like this type of tech debt? Like seriously, wouldn't this be one of the first things that you would try to take care of? Like, why are we why do we continue to see this? Or is it just there's a rotating group of people in management positions They'll, they're just hoping they can stay there for a short period of time, roll off to another company as quickly as possible. I don't. I, so the, I mean, I I want Hal's take too, but I I don't think you can blame the security company or anyone on the security team. It's a zero day. Like I, I like with the move it stuff. No, no, no but I'm going. To, I'm going. I know it's a zero day, but that but when that move it hit, especially with our customers, like our customers, they knew about it like before the public exploit code was hit. And they were shutting things down, or were they hit before it was actually? Uh, they were hit. Oh, by the time uh, they found out, their data was already clopped. Yeah, so, like, I, I agree with that. Yeah, okay. like, and keep in mind, like, okay, my take on this, and I, I you know, I, not to like diverge the, the conversation, but like, so, okay, the the clop ransomware group made a decision. They had a move at zero day, and they sat down. Well, I mean, I don't know. They probably sat down in the ransomware region of the internets, and said, "Hey, um, what do you think's more?" worth more money to us disclosing this and getting a payout from Zerodium or whatever or actually running with it and getting x terabytes of data and like seriously like i wonder if they would have like can't do you think they're going to be able to monetize this enough to pay for like how much this exploit would have been worth from you know the government or Zerodium or whoever like i'm genuinely curious like it's bad it's a shit storm or whatever you want to call it but is it getting them paid probably not like maybe i don't know how many companies are paying them to ha not have their data posted or if they are like it's all we'll never probably find out unless the fbi decides to gift us that information Did, didn't but, this all start with just a sql injection back in no back in... it's a zero day i mean it's like yes and no. it was it was I thought it was a SQL injection. It's like SQL injection so based, part, but it's, this yeah. This is the part that really bugs me because I, I, I've been doing this with John since 2013 and before that. SQL injection has been around how long? Anybody? Yeah. 30 years? No, this, like is, this is a new attack, Joff. You haven't, this is, this is totally. Okay. I get you. It's, it's, it, I'm listen, just kidding, Joff. Joff it, you're absolutely right. <laughs> no. Uh, yeah. I mean, yeah. it's a, it's a, it's a case for like, you know, what we do, security testing and all that stuff. I will say like the complexity of this is enough that it's not just like a trivial SQL inject. Like it is, but it's, you know, I guess what I would say is like, I feel like it's a coin toss whether this would be found on your average pen test or not. Like I would bet that they were getting pen tests. That's my guess. Like, I mean, I don't know. Maybe there's probably a massive lawsuit that we'll talk about on the show where they're suing mm -hmm. whoever did their app testing. But, yeah, uh, um, yeah I, I don't know. I mean, I think it's a. You're right, though. From a secure design perspective, all the marketing materials probably said it was super securely designed, and that's why it was used by some of the top companies. Um, you know, the a lot of government agencies, healthcare, etc. But at the same time, yeah, it's sequels are going to sequel, just, right? If, if if there's one remote exploit that gets under my skin it's sql injection because it's so preventable i yeah. mean e e even in older code bases there are things you can do <laughs> i mean joff joff 
<laughs> Rick, Rick Deckard said, if a client gets an OWASP POP 10 in their report, the report will be delivered in Comic Sans. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. So, so, yeah, I mean, like, legitimately, though, Joff, like, does it really matter? Let's say it was a epic buffer overflow or, you know, smashing the stack, like, DEF CON level thing where it's super, like, intricate. Does it really make a difference? Like, at the end of the day, like, it's still... No, it doesn't. It doesn't. A zero day is a zero day, right? Like, yeah, I, that's, that's how I feel. Yeah. all the time about, like, if it was a SQL injection vulnerability, like, that's not a real vulnerability because you didn't smash the stack. It's like, oh, God. It's amazing how people, especially in the offensive space, for a long, long, long time, always try to define offensive awesomeness, just happened to be in their specific field of expertise. Um, it's weird. So, it's like the so defense in debt. Yeah, We're assume there's now. a zero day. Just assume yep. it. And then, it like, right. don't expose your MFT to the whole internet. That's also a good idea. Right. Have I mean, the, but, it, know, but in like, this case, this is this is an application that has to be exposed to the internet, right? So it's a, a freaking secure well, file sharing application, right? It depends on the use case. Right? It depends this on the goes use back case. to what I was talking about with Joff. It is preventable. I mean, if Moveit yeah. had done a basic level security analysis, they, I'm guessing, more than likely, would have found Yeah, I don't know. That's, that. I, I think we'll find out more on that. I think someone will sue someone and we'll, they'll unseal eventually. Like, that's my hope, but I don't know. Anyway. Right. I, yeah. I want to get to a cool story, though, um, that, but speaking of lawsuits. You guys remember back in 2008, that talk that got pulled from DEF CON about um, like adding money to the Meg strip cards for the Boston uh, subway? Yeah. It was a big 2008. deal. 2008? You mean like yep. this? No, no, no. 2008. 2008. We're going that far back? And there was like cease and desist, well, Corey wasn't born lawsuits, yet. all of these different <laughs> things back in 2008. And that talk got pulled. Um, I think the slides got leaked online. And that was kind of, it was kind of a big deal. 2008 was a great year for computer security. It was awesome. Um, now, they just some new younger hackers decided to go back and look at it, the RFID cards. And they found that a lot of those same types of vulnerabilities still exist in those systems uh, for, for Boston subway cards. Um, the difference between 2008 and now is the Boston Transit Authority didn't threaten to sue. There was no takedown. There was no fighting on this at all. Um, basically, the way the Boston Transit Authority took it was like, yeah, we'll take care of it when we upgrade the entire system in 2000. Wow. This, this yeah, is such I, a wholesome it, it, story. Mean, there, there's actually a lot of really interesting detail here. I mean, um, yeah. it's sort of like a friend of a friend thing. So the, the, the school kids here in 2023 ended up contacting some of the original team that, that did the work back in 2008, um, who introduced them to the security people at the MBTA. And so like they made that intro and, and were able to kind of have a, a much more mutually beneficial conversation about um, the vulnerability and, and you know what they found and, and what they're doing. And in fact, one of the kids from, two, from the, the group here in 2023 says, oh yeah, the security guy from the MBTA was like a really cool guy, you know, like, it's like, yeah. oh, okay, that's nice. I mean, so in, in some sense, the MBTA had realized you know, like, hey, we're better off engaging with these kids than than making them, you know, but the let's also talk about let's talk about the Streisand effect on this, oh, yeah. right? Yeah. Like this is a new story that we're gonna talk about. A couple more security podcasts, we'll talk about it, and that's it. In two thousand eight, it was national news that they got lawyers involved, they threatened this talk. It was the talk of DEF CON, um, or one of the talks of DEF CON. I mean, we had Dan Kaminsky. We had 08067. We had a bunch of stuff that was yeah. happening in 2000. SSL that was a great school. year. That was a great year. Um, it was a huge year. And that made that actually rose to the top. I think it was on like nightly news. Um, All right, and, Macho Man Randy Savage. Yeah. So, but this now that they're working together, it's like, it, we're, we're not going to talk about it again. So um, wait, hold on. It, are we actually having some kind of positive impact in the security space? Like, Like, is security finally getting through to the, people that run programs like this that we're better as friends than foes like is that is this like surprisingly I mean, wholesome and not to be. i feel like we have 10 of the opposite uh versions of this article but it's so good that we have one version of this article that's like the good ending this is yeah. the good ending like it finally happened i, I think I, it's I, great that red teams and blue teams are getting along together and i want to shoot a hole in that and let's talk about the merlin open source exploit post exploitation <laughs> uh yeah no, no, does anybody else oh. have anything else on boston How I, I, look 
you know, forget the only thing I was say about MSOA 067 was the gift that kept on giving for like a decade after that. I mean, that was just yep. fabulous. But anyway. The, the only thing I'll say in closing about Boston is good job on the, the kids who did this hack. They uh, actually sit there, sat there and analyzed a buttload of data to reverse engineer the checksumming algorithm that enabled them to basically reprint the uh, the RFID card. So a, a bunch of good work on on, on their behalf. So um, wasn't don't... weren't wasn't one of these students they they weren't like a LL at MIT or anything. No, they no, like they're they're high school kids. kids. It was awesome. They're high school kids. Yeah. And, and whoever is running the high the security program at their local high school is like we did it. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean finally the, putting this high school on the map. The, the, uh, their the faculty the advisor teams. is probably running for cover, actually. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, the, the oh, don't mention my name. Don't, name. don't mention my name. You know, yeah. <laughs> running for anyway. cover. Yeah, yeah. Good work. They, they Good were work, at risk kids. teens. Okay, so the Netflix spinoff when they were at risk teens, but then they found hackers. Uh, <laughs> in a yeah, they can they can like <laughs> skate around on rollerblades and and oh yeah, they have was, like augmented reality. Awesome. I I see the subways vulnerable. Yeah, I think yeah. Jason Blanchard is already working on a comic like script mm. right now. He's like, yeah. it's like the sequel of a movie where the kids, what is it? Where the kids, uh, kids are the main uh, characters the main from the original. Characters from yeah. The original, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean that that is gonna happen. Somebody's gonna be like, hey, it's my first talk at DefCon. You probably all know my dad. Like it's gonna <laughs> happen. Like it's, this is gonna happen. It's gonna be weird. It's, it's just a matter of time. It's, it's just, just a matter, a matter of time. Of time. Yeah. Well, look, Jason w weighed in. That's awesome. Yeah, Jason uh, said they got started with a complimentary tech of back towards <laughs> So, okay, there's two there, – and to, 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 to segue, there's two stories that John mentioned, both about real threat – or I posted another story. The first one is the Merlin thing, which is the, – the, the theme is attackers using open source tools for real. Um, so the Mer what what is Merlin? Is it uh, is he a wizard with big sleeves or is that another post exploitation mm -hmm. framework? It's ah. yeah, post C two, C two. Yeah, oh nice. Merlin. HTTP three. We got a uh, quick. Gotta love quick. Yeah, it's uh it's running in GoLang. Um, yeah. Mm. It's uh yeah, it does quick. Not SCTP, but they can add that in as well. Mm -hmm. Um, it looks like a really cool project, but I'm I I, I keep on wondering is this going to start up the debate again of you know, <laughs> offensive people stop releasing tools to the public. And I, I always come back again and again and again. If the security industry cannot handle tools that are released publicly on GitHub with full source code, and <laughs> we are screwed. Yes, yes, that is really funny. So, and, and Brian will post the article, but I have another article that's very personally relevant to me that's the same thing, which is that uh, Freeze RS. Or for a Rust, Matt Eidelberg's version of Freeze RS has been used also by threat actors for X worm malware attacks. Um, this is relevant because he's, uh, you know, a, an old friend. And here's the conversation between me and him I see your tool was used by threat actors. Oh, darn, that means it's burned. And he's like, no, nah, it's not burned. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so I guess uh, maybe we are screwed. <laughs> I, I i think in a lot of ways we are i no, but i think we you know this is kind of one of those questions you know how last is you know I, I think we are getting better like you know look at 2008 and 2008 was a great year like and i was really deep in offense at that point right that was that was like 98 percent of my existence um it was a horrible year for the security industry but if you're looking at like where we were with like you know huge worm, we had the Dan Kaminsky attacks, the SSL strip stuff from uh, Marlin Spike. There's just a ton of things, and I remember feeling like everything is horribly broken, and it felt bad. I think one of the big differences is now I get the feeling that I know that everything's broken, and I'm more okay with it uh, than I was back then. Um, but no, as far as communication between red teams and blue teams. I, th I think the communication is far better than it's been, I think, at any point in, in the history of this industry so far. Well, I, I, the other thing that's, that's happened in significant um, quantities is, is the, the blue team technology has come leaps and bounds ahead of yeah. where it used to be. You know, I mean, the fact that you can do data analytics on massive amounts of data, you can do user behavioral stuff, you can, I mean, it, it's just a different world from a defense perspective now, uh, which is... Which is good. Now, is it is it because of what we've done in the community to kind of push on people and say, no, you got to do better. You got to do better. Maybe, um, 
maybe not. I don't no, know. Jeff, I, I think it was like one small thing that we did that you were definitely a huge part of that is whenever we were doing the uh, sacred cash cow tipping, um, you know, whenever we yeah. were going into Semantic and McAfee and we were like, we literally used the exact same technique for four years in a row, elevate your game. Um, I, I, I do think that a lot of vendors and we've talked with some of them. Silence was one before they got bought by BlackBerry. And initially they were really, really, really like unhappy with us and we developed a better relationship with them. And I, I do think that things changed. Uh, I do. I, I, I do think that we are a small part of that. I also think the MITRE had a large part of that. Like yeah. literally here's a taxonomy of a bunch of attacks folks. And that had never been done before. That taxonomy and, was a game changer, right? I yeah. mean, that, that really laid out, you know, not only for defense, for offense as well. I mean, the whole thing, what what kind of put a lens on the whole, on the whole industry, which we were badly in need of, uh, and uh, you know as far as our relationships when we were beating on people, no, they were they were good in the end because we ended up coming to a place where we were having some productive conversations. Like you know, there's a reason I I pounded your product into the ground. All right, let's talk about it. Um, so it's good. Uh, I think um, I think we are getting better. Uh, overall as an industry i'm i'm an optimist though so yeah wow well you know what i say we end on that surprisingly wholesome and positive yeah. note because uh, that's not hey, usually that's... how things end so uh, i say we roll with it i think that that's a good point I, I think usually at the end of these shows we're like it's just like well that's the end of human civilization and we're documenting <laughs> it it's all burning down um let's be optimistic hal do you have any closing words before we bring up the crooked finger um no, I, I I like that sentiment. I I like to believe that that we're we're doing better as an industry. So um, yeah. I, I'm I'm willing to roll with that. Otherwise, otherwise, otherwise I have such a dark joke. Otherwise, I have otherwise such a I've dark... been wasting my life, and you otherwise know, we've and... wasted decades. Huh? I have Just... a, I I, 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 oh, I I have to. Okay, if you want the good ending, just cl click out of this now. But I'm gonna make That's this it. dark joke. Oh! If if you live in Boston, I hear Rapid Seven's hiring. All right, fire it. Oh my god! Give <laughs> uh, <laughs> it your finger. All right, bring up the finger. 